Hey guys, welcome to the vlog and check it out. Uh, we're gonna do maintenance today on, uh, on our equipment like I promised you. So the TB360, we got a little problem with the deck, all right? The deck is splitting and I'm gonna show you coming up where it's splitting right behind the front wheels. And I think that's because I was dropping it out of my truck and I was being a little bit careless here and there. But, you know, and then who knows what happens with old boy when I'm not looking to. Uh, so, but you know, I mean, it's a $300 mower. It's not the strongest deck. Um, you know, any reason it could it could have split. Uh, one side's pretty bad, one side's not too bad at all, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys a quick little fix for that with the welder, not a big deal. Uh, we sharpen the blade, we change the oil, and we tighten up some bolts. We get the TB360 running like a top. I'll show you how we do that. Uh, but also, uh, I'm going to show you how to grease the heads of your weed eaters and your edgers and stuff like that that have that little port down there, that little plug you take out. Now the FS70 doesn't have one of those. So we start off with the FS70, but then I quickly will move into my 104 mix to make sure that you guys got to see how it was done. Um, so we did the weed eater and we did the hedge trimmer so you could see how you do that with that special lube, that special steel grease that you could buy in the tube. Uh, and then we move into working on the mower. So all in all, it's a pretty good day. So, you know, at least you get to see some maintenance and see a little bit of, on, you know, how you can keep your stuff running uh, like a top. And that's, you know, that's one of the biggest things about this business is the more that you can do on your own, the more money you're going to save. And again, it's non-billable hours. You know, maintenance is non-billable hours. But if whatever you can do on your own, it's going to save you that in the end. So... Um, I hope you guys enjoy this vlog, check it out, and uh, leave some comments below. Tomorrow, we start mowing with episode 7. We're going to be right back into mowing. We got four days of some serious butt busting to get done, and uh, go on to a nice weekend, and this will be an entire cycle complete with a 21-inch push mower, about 100 yards. So, we're doing pretty good. Rock on. I appreciate you guys. The FS70, the two cycle weed eater, that's the first thing we're going to work on today uh, as a part of our little maintenance video. Um, I got some stuff to share with you. Uh, just some things that helps make your day go a little bit smoother, right? A little bit easier. So let's get rid of that. Um, this is the insert right here that you put your line on, right? You strain your line on this. These wear down. These right here rub on the ground see that see that right there see how small that is right that one's not too bad actually that's a newer one that one's only a few weeks old but these will be rubbing with friction as you're eating along the rub on the on the grass on dirt on the ground on concrete on everything um, and then you tap them and they wear down pretty quick this one's pretty much shot let me show you that I mean, that one's, that one's pretty bad, right? Now, here's a brand new one. You, when you look at the difference between a brand new one and an, and, a, and an older one, it makes a really big difference when you're trying to weed eat along and you want to advance your line out. You'll see, either you'll see your guy beating it on the ground or hitting it on a fence or doing something and then burning marks in the grass because he's not able to advance his line out, not able to extend it. When you have... A bigger bump here it's easier to be able to get the line to extend so I like to buy these kind of fairly often and then I keep them threaded up too um, here's another one so here's another one this one's fairly new so what what I usually do like on the Saturdays or whatever when old boy goes out and works on his own I send him out with the weed eater and then I thread up another one ready to, with line ready to rock. So if he runs out of line in the middle of the day, then he could just swap it out real quick. Super quick and super simple. Um, they don't come with the springs. So you have to buy springs. These little springs. And these, these are the little springs that go in here. They, they just push in, right? So this is, you got this, you got this. You got this and you got this. So we're going to retire this one. Um, that one's a little bit too old. So we're going to take this brand new one. We're going to put a spring in it. So you, if you don't have a spring, you just pull them out. But see, that's it. Spring's in. You just push the spring in. 
And then I'm going to put this one on my shelf and save it for a rainy day. And then this one. So I'll put the spring in this one. So I have a brand new one, a used one, and then we got one on the end of the weed eater here. Now, another thing I bought, this is called Steel Super Lube FS. This is the grease that you put in the weed eater head, okay? And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So, open this up. I went to the store and got this stuff earlier. So you got this Super Lube, right? And it's, you take this cap off here and you take can't see it because there's so much shit on here but that's a part of maintenance we're gonna do we're gonna clean off this crap but get this out of the way and then I'll show you all right guys so uh, let's talk about getting this clean here right so this is where the plug is so I want to brush off any of this loose dirt all right and then you got this plug right here. See that? So we're gonna take this plug out. You can use a wrench or you can use that tool that they gave you. Uh, yep, there we go, 12 millimeter. Brake torque. Okay. Super Lube, steel Super Lube FS. Thread it on, threads right in. Does not thread into Echo. At least not the homeowner echoes. Give it a little squeeze. There's resistance. Okay, there's definitely going to be resistance because it's small. But you just give it a little squeeze, a little bit, and then you'll pretty much feel when it's it's done. And that's it. I mean, it's not moving anymore. See that? Nice and clean. Puts the grease in there. that hair out of there. How the hell did a hair get in there? See that hair? Well, that's not a hair. That's the tip of the grease. Put this on. Put the plug back on. Snug it back up. Done. All right, so the hedger, the hedge trimmer, um, this is the articulating head, right? So you got two spots that need to be greased. You got right here for the gearbox, and you got right here for the gearbox. So very simple. Do it the same way. We just did it with the weed eater. Brake torque. Brake torque. Quick, fast, and simple, but it's the right way. To, it's it's the right thing to do. The right way to do it. Now you can use a regular grease gun if you want. You don't have to use this stuff. And then put it in. This is a much bigger gearbox, so you feel that resistance. There we go, it's right there. Then you got this one right here. This one won't take as much because the cavity is much smaller. Yeah, lots of resistance. Alright guys, there's 
one more to do and this is the extension uh, the attachment the weed eater attachment for that combi system for that edger that we were just I just greased up you know that's the combi system so that was the edger attachment um, oh you didn't see the edger actually there's no grease there's no grease port on it like like these it's a sealed gearbox um, but yeah, my edger is the combi. I also have the echo edger that you've been watching through this series, two guys in a mower. Uh, but I also have the, um, the steel combi edger. So we'll go ahead and squeeze some grease in here. Make sure we got good resistance. We know we're good. Just that little bit, guys, can make a huge difference and your stuff lasting a little bit longer and uh, there we go so, you see how this is pretty worn down so all you gotta do is just take this spring pull it right out that's pretty worn down this is pretty worn down too it's about time to replace this whole unit uh, you got this we got this ready to rock that's pretty that's pretty trashed right there, but it's okay for a backup. And that's what I use this for. I use this just as a backup. Um, we'll just put this back in the trailer and sit on it for a little while. So the next thing we need to work on <clears throat> is the mower. We need to fix that deck. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do, which I've, I've said it before, is I always warm up the engine first and it gets the, um, it gets the spoon that's on the, the end of the crank, it gets that to, or the rod or whatever, it'll splash the oil around, get it warmed up, get all the loose metal, little, little metal fragments and stuff like that. I mean it's microscopic, but it's, it's there and you'll see, a, sometimes you'll see a little, um, a little layer in the oil when you change the oil, you'll see a little metallic uh, like metallic paint, you'll see that in the oil. Um, you want to get all that out. So your oil ports right here, your oil um, fill right here, your dipsticks right here. So make sure that's good. Fire up your machine, warm it up for just a short little while, and then go ahead, pull it. And I got my oil catch can right here. Hook the machine into the oil catch can, and then dispose of the oil properly at an auto parts store or any oil recycling place. Most auto parts stores will take it for you. So let's go ahead and <coughs> get started. There we go. Nice and warm. Pull the dipstick. Dump the oil. Table's in the way. There you go. And we just did this not too long ago, actually. That's some nasty looking oil right there. So while we got it like this, I'll go ahead and take the blade off. There you go. Let's get the blade out of here. Now, first thing you want to do I always pull the spark plug just to make sure I don't have a problem and then just quickly brake torque 5 8 wrench takes it right off this blade was purchased Friday Friday morning we put this on so it has 12 it has 22 yards on it and it's still really sharp not bad at all wow I'm very impressed <laughs> um, this is a, an adapter this is the blade adapter and I have this listed on um, all of my videos now uh, probably dating all through this series two guys and a mower um, this adapter these little nipples right here help secure the blade right here so if those wear down just from friction and stuff like that then um, you're going to want to get a new one of these adapters and this adapter has a new pulley on it too so <coughs> it's all built in it's all one piece all you got to do at this point once you take the blade off 
is um, take this plastic cover off. Here's a bolt here, um, a bolt here, and I think there's one more up here or over here somewhere, I don't remember. You take that plastic cover off and pull the belt off, pull the adapter off. And you put your new adapter on, put the belt back on it, put this black shield back on. Really simple to do. Actually did a video back probably May, I think it was like May 25th or something like that. I did a video where I showed you kind of how to replace the drive belt that goes back there. So kind of simple. Um, but yeah, so here's the blade. So, I mean, I got it off, so I'm going to put a quick edge on it. I'm just going to leave it out of my way because we need to address these cracks in the deck that are that are forming probably from dropping out of my freaking truck. So let me go ahead and get a sharp edge on this blade real fast. saw me do on the back side is all I did is I just edged off a little bit of the burrs that's about it um, and then you just kind of follow the angle of the blade and it ain't rocket science so many people put so much crap into it look man use the blade so you can't use it anymore go get another one uh, sharpen them up put a nice edge on it try to follow the angle the best that you can but it doesn't have to be perfect okay don't worry too much about it just follow the angle the best you can the important thing is that you put a nice sharp edge on it so you cut your grass and you leave your grass healthy and green not all frayed from a dull blade all right so don't be afraid to, to try it and learn let's do the other side nice and light didn't do, overdo it nice and sharp this is a three-in-one blade okay right off the shelf see it's got the little star pattern and the holes all right this is right off the shelf I got this listed on Amazon on my my channels this is the regular three-in-one blade it's it's like this okay they call it the mulching blade but you've seen it with the side discharge shoot this thing this blade throws the clippings out it's awesome let me show you guys the cracks in the deck now all right, I don't know what's going to show here and what's not going to show. So I'm going to do the best I can to show you. Do you see this line right here? Right there. That's a slice. That's a crack in the deck. It's a weak point right there. What we need to do is weld it. In order to weld it, we need to clean it and put a couple welds on it just to keep it. It's also here too. This is not good. See if I go like this with my hand right here and I move like this. I don't know. Can you see it splitting? It's splitting. The problem with that is it's causing the deck to bounce. It's causing the deck to go like this. And it's causing the front of the blade to chop the grass. And I can see uneven. All right. There's also one two three four five on a replaceable plastic front end you can replace this front end if you ever damaged it really bad um, so that's you know something to think about but these five bolts need to be sh nice and tight but these these cracks need to be addressed i wonder if that's showing let me zoom in even more let's see what happens hang on i'll adjust you Right here see that crack so we're gonna weld that crack and we don't need to do much we just need to put like a little spot stitch right here a little spot stitch right there so we're gonna grind this down real quick just to make it clean metal we'll get my welder put a tack on that real fast put the blade back on put the oil back in it and this machine is gonna be as good as new let me see if I can grind it down
why you grind it down is because you want the weld to be able to penetrate the metal and if you got crap all over it it'll pop 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 it's gonna pop anyways but we'll see what we can do here all right let me go get my welder and i'll be back uh we're using a chicago electric welder it's a 70 amp no it's a 90 amp welder it's a line feed welder okay one of these all right push the trigger and there's your little thingy there it advances and you stitch the metal all right I'll be using an automatic shield, all right, automatic helmet. And um, we did the grinding, and the only other thing that I like to do is take a nice wire brush and really make sure it's clean. The next thing that you can do is you can get yourself some muriatic acid with a towel and put some muriatic acid or muriatic acid on here and that really cleans the metal up nice um, but it's not that critical to me I just want to stop the cancer I just want to stop the split that's it so in order to do that we need to do two things one get us a nice little chunk of metal here for the ground and check our flash there we go we got good ground we can stitch this up so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to put a little stitch here and a little stitch there and hope i don't burn any plastic all right let's do it not going to overdo it okay let's do that again See how it's poppy? It's dirty. But that stops the cancer. That is done. Done deal. I want to make sure I'm not melting that plastic or not. We're gonna put one more right here. That's a done deal, baby. All right, see right here, there's a small slice. I put the light on it, maybe you could see it right there, right above my finger. There's a small little slice. So what I'll do is, is I'll tack that in real quick and we should be good to go. Let me see if I can snug this up too. This plastic here. Tighten this up. But yeah, the deck's not flexing anymore like it was. So looks like we should be in pretty good shape. Let me back up a little bit. Tighten up a few bolts. I'll be right back. Okay, here's a look at my welder. Little setup here. Got this little stand. Um little welding cart or whatever it's got wheels and I just roll it to the backyard keeping my storage shed 90 amp flux wire welder item number 68887 Chicago Electric I got this for like I think $90 from uh, Harbor Freight you know you get them super coupons and stuff so badass little little welder man and you know it works right Remember, do as I say, not as I do. Whenever you're tightening the, a sharp blade, please wear gloves or hold it with a towel. All right, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, we cool? Here we go. 
I did pull the spark plug wire off, so I have every bit of confidence that I can safely move this blade. And, you know, just making sure there's no issues. And there ain't. We're good. Not even close to the weld. So let's flip it up. Let's put oil in this machine. Let's check its stability. Briggs and Stratton SAE30. And I think this, this takes about almost the whole thing, if I remember right. Let that sit for a minute. Let's check the stability on this thing now. Remember, it used to flex really, really bad. Yeah, the wheel comes up. Before, I would go like this and the deck would move and the wheels would stay down. Now the wheel's coming up. So, yeah, I would say that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. Back end needs to be tightened up. Back end bolts. But yeah, that whole deck would flex right now. The whole this whole deck right here would, would like pivot. And this wheel would stay on the ground as I would be lifting up. And now it don't. The wheel comes up with the deck. Perfect. Success. Even if it's not a hundred percent perfect, it's a hundred percent better than it was. And that's the name of the game, man. Get out there and just keep on mowing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to buy a new machine right now. For what? Easy fix. But I'm lucky I have a welder. You know, not everybody does. So let's check these. Make sure we're nice and snug here. Here we go. Very nice. All right, let's check this oil level and let's get done. Oh yeah. Right there. Perfect. Want to fire it up? Let's fire it up. We just did some serious maintenance, man. Some serious work needed to be done there. Oil change, blade sharpened, deck welded. I like it. Two cycle engines have been, their uh, gearboxes have been greased. Oil level's good. I'm feeling good. Let's go ahead and clean up. Okay, hey, what can I say? That's the first time I ever welded a deck on a lawnmower like that. A little push mower. I mean, that's kind of crazy. But, hey, it's done now. And, you know, we saved some money. Um, I know some people would probably have, have junked it or sold it maybe for a hundred bucks, went out and bought a brand new one, but I'd like to finish the season uh, with that machine, you know, after this week it'll, it'll be used, you know, not very often, of course, um, we'll be back on the zero turn, and um, I just want to make sure we set the record straight, there's nothing wrong with my zero turn, okay, We're, I'm truly just doing this to show you guys that it can be done, alright, my zero turn's in the trailer, there's no issues with it. It'll be right back to work next cycle. There you go. We welded up the deck. We changed the oil. We sharpened the blades. And we um, greased up some some gears. You know, the uh, the gearboxes or gear heads or the heads. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, at the end of our two cycle machines. Pretty cool. Simple maintenance. Got it done. Uh, so I really do appreciate you guys. And I'm going to ask you one more time. Please check the links below. Check the charity that we support the Children's Research Hospital for St. Jude's. If you guys can donate anything, man, it'd be fantastic. If not, share the link. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions to any of the parts or items that I use to make my videos or to keep my business operating, those links to Amazon 
are right below where you can purchase everything from my editing software to the parts I buy from my lawnmower uh, to my vlogging equipment like my cameras and my software and stuff like that. So I really do appreciate you guys. I, I know I say it a lot but I don't think I could ever say it enough. You guys are blowing up my channel and I really do appreciate it. The comments are fantastic. I'm very pleased with the community that we're creating here. So I can't wait till tomorrow. I, I go to sleep every night and I can't wait for the next day because I'm so excited to go out and create more movies and give more videos and more ideas to other people. And let's do this. Uh, let's make some money and let's grow our business and let's, let's have some fun, guys. I mean, this is great. So I will see you guys tomorrow.